I believe tonight's your night. Does anybody's faith bear witness? I want, I want your faith to just say, Lord, tonight I want you to say something special to me. I don't know if you know how amazing God is, but he can speak to the whole room and it all be individual. Like, you don't know how many times I've ministered and they said, that was just for me. And it's like, that was just for me. That was just for me. Okay, well, God is amazing. So I want it to be all about you tonight because I know when he perfects in you what he's called you to be. <laughs> the world's going to have to watch out. You know, it's just going to be complete. There's going to be a complete transformation. We're really believing for revival in this region. Um, we've stepped into some already, but we want so much more. How many people want more of God? you guys also to know that tonight, tonight I do not have to be dignified in any way, shape, or form because Dan's speaking. Is that great? That's the best place to be ever. That's what you do. You blame it on the guests. You could just like kick your shoes off and you don't have to care about anything. But one thing I really want to, um, I want to do, Edwin, where's Edwin? Come on up here, Edwin, run fast. Testimonies from earlier. No, I got not. Edwin, run. Run, Edwin. This is my friend Edwin. And uh, he just wanted to make a quick announcement about tomorrow so that we are on page with, with what's going on tomorrow. And uh, so thank you, Edwin, for sharing. You, you thought I was going to do the announcement. But it's, I'm not that responsible tonight. That's why I have Disney drivers. Uh, this is about sons and daughters classes. This is, uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, every week we have it at 1 o'clock. This time also we have it at 1 o'clock. Uh, but uh, we just want to make sure we start at 1 o'clock. A couple of times we didn't start at 1 o'clock. And uh, we're having two sessions, yeah, this evening, uh, tomorrow. So I want uh, all the participants to be there on time or before time if possible. So because we have uh, two important tests for all the beginners, it's going to be very good and uh, it's going to be awesome. So I just want to make that announcement. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Edwin. Bless you. He's doing a great job with sons and daughters and... Uh, Basically, we just want you to get out there because we want to start like right on the dot. And what we're doing is we have two tests that we, that one of them is, is Bethel's mission statement. Uh, and, it, and it drives us to understand each people, the people that are coming on board, the people that are becoming members. We want to know exactly what drives person by person. Are we getting ready to release children? See, I'm so, so slow. Tracy, you need to help me tonight. Help me. Help me. Lord, we just thank you for supernatural children going. They just knew prophetically. Thank you, Lord. I don't know how it, it was just known. But 10 and under, please sign your children in. We like to be responsible adults, as you can tell. <laughs> I'm just in way too good of a mood for tonight. Sorry. You guys will have to forgive me. You haven't been here all day. I am so in a good mood. <laughs> and God is too. <laughs> That's the best news ever. He's so in a good mood and it's all about you. Uh, so we're going to really do something really quickly. Everybody say real quick. All right, we're going to bless Dan and his ministry. I want you guys to just lavish lots and lots of goodies. Dan is doing an amazing job all around the world, but uh, and this this kind of stuff he hates, but that's what's even better about it. If you know anything about me, when I find out people's uh, what embarrasses them, I do it all the more. It's just it's just more fun than ever. <laughs> all right, so anyone that needs an envelope, just write out your checks to R H L C, and we'll just cut checks to Dan. And raise your hand if you need a, if you need an envelope, please. 
I want you to put expectation on what you're giving. Just, just realize, obviously, if you know Dan, you're giving to good soil. If you don't know Dan, then just trust me that it's going to be an amazing night. And uh, the last time we stayed up till three in the morning, sitting on my carpet, just like drooling about all the good things that the Lord's doing, uh, and, and and just just opening up revelation. At, at the house and, and it's been amazing so let's make this quick and, and just just bless him um do we have amazing offering music for the amazing sound man that's ready every time on point look at that thumbs up this is awesome thumbs up for you to give you got a gift for us awesome joe need joe we need an envelope here she's slow on raising the hand but she's the fast check writer ever so lord we just thank you come on up Let's go ahead and then we'll bless the offering. Thank you guys. From the bottom of Dan's heart. <laughs> misconceptions about you father you're wonderfully good and i pray that every seed in here that we know it's planted into good ground but god we pray a, a quick return into the lives of your people lord we know and trust in you and that's why we can give out of freedom and out of a pure heart lord we just thank you and we love on you i pray the richest blessing on dan as he ministers lord just pour through him in such a mighty way in jesus name amen thank you joseph <laughs> yeah, I'm not ready to have a good time. Um, before Dan comes up, we're going to do a quick dance. You guys are ready? Dance, dance, guys. They are slowly moving. You guys got to run like Edwin. Edwin set a precedence of running. Look at this. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, man. All right. You ready in the back with their track? All right. You guys are awesome. Come on. Let's get it up here. Woo. Yeah. Keep going. 
Good girl.
guy, I love Jesus. But I am sober, I'm serious. I'm, I'm his, I'm committed, I'm serious. Like I'm laid down my body for the gospel. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He told me, if any man in John come to me, or Matthew come to me, let him first deny himself. Yeah. I didn't come into this thing just to go to heaven. I didn't come to this thing just for blessings. I didn't come into this thing so God gives me provision and makes my day I come in this thing to give what was never mine, my life, back to Him so He could come in me and live it through me. And bring His name great glory and touch lives all around me and leave a legacy that I speak forever. You follow me? It's called born again. <laughs> Serious. It's called born again. So I didn't, I didn't pray a prayer to go to heaven. Heaven came back inside of me. Yeah. I'm one with God. Yeah. Woo. 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 So when I'm singing, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours, over and over, there's something we're really singing. We're really learning to yield ourselves like clay to the potter's hand. You realize he's the potter of the clay. Yeah. What you do with clay, if you're clay, the only power you have is to yield. To the vision, the mastery, the gifting of which you placed in his hand, the potter. If you're the clay, you're subject to the potter. You're at the mercy, if you will, of the potter. You're only going to turn out as good as the potter sees the clay. Yeah. Cool. Oh. This is good. Yeah. Write this down. I'm going to preach this again. <laughs> Look, you're clay. He's the potter. The only thing that you do is to become a great you. You are aware of how much Jesus loves you, right? You really are aware of that. Okay, because I looked over at you in worship, and I felt God's love towards you, yeah. and His favor towards you. And I felt like in this season, He's given you some wisdom you've been asking for, and I feel like He's bringing some things together and making sense of a couple of things that you're not to fret, you're not to panic, you're not to go to and fro in your mind. Just rest in his life. He's going to give you wisdom. He's going to give you some specific instruction on a couple of things that have tried to put you in turmoil, but he's giving you some answers in this season. Stay at his feet. Stay at his presence. Seek the better part. Be a man. And don't feel like you've got to do something because you'll be impressed by something. you be in his presence. Be generous, okay? Because when I look over to you, I, I, I perceive the incredible of God towards you and that there's favor towards you in your actions. Yeah. So don't strive in the season. You'd be out of the will of God to strive. Strive to enter into his rest. Yeah? yeah. I'm just telling you. I just saw God doing something sweet. No, no, I, I, he's my father. I, I, yeah, but thanks for affirming that. But I do know when I hear God's goodness. <laughs> he's my father. I'm not, no, I know. I'm not being arrogant. <laughs> He's our dad. He's our father. We have a prophetic gift, and I have honor with the prophetic gift because it said in the Bible that you all prophesy and you all understand the seed of your Lord is God and speaking, right? There's something he has to teach a lot. If you become one with his heart, if you become love, he can tell himself anything. You always be in the know. You become love. God is love. And you have only one reason for hearing God's voice is for God's voice to be proclaimed in the benefit and blessing of others. Wow. It's the clearest way to move and give them. Don't just desire gifts. Pursue love. Yeah. Pursue love. Desire gifts. Come on. He can tell himself anything. If I become one with his heart, I'm in. <laughs> Isn't that good? Because yeah. I won't misuse the information. I won't think wrong of somebody. He can tell me anything necessary for healing, deliverance, breakthrough. Because God's not one to point out sin. Love comes one or two sins. But sometimes God will even tell you some stuff that's touchy. That's... I mean, he's shown me stuff like so-and-so in their family touched them wrong. Duh, 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 duh. And you just got to go talk to them. And it, if you don't understand the love of God, that could be a... Whoa, am I right? Am I hearing? Oh, my God. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. But he can't tell you that if you're going to go, Oh, they what? They've been through what? That happened to them? Ooh, 
you start stereotyping with the information. Come on, come on. Yeah. See, love doesn't do that. Yeah. Love just sees your value and brings out the best. And love takes the information for your sake to be free. Yeah. So I'm just saying, I don't know where I got on this, but right. Paul writes spiritual gifts in, in Corinthians 12. And then he says, so desire earnestly. Yeah. So that means with all your heart, desire spiritual gifts. And it's almost as if he's writing it, he catches himself. Yeah. Yeah. And says, however, I'm going to show you more excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it's good to desire the gift, but let me show you where it really works. Yeah. Just become love. Yeah. Look at how he writes it. If you look in your Bible, 1 Corinthians 12 at the end. Going into 13, 13 at the end, in the 14th. So, because it's all one book, it's all one letter. It's not chapters. We put chapters in there. It's just one letter. Yeah. So he's writing to earnestly desire his gifts. Yeah. Still, I'm going to show you more excellent. Right? And he talks about you moving in giftings apart from love and how detrimental that is to your life. Why? Because you'll let your gift become your identity instead of love. Yeah. Come on. You let what you do for the Lord become who you are and how qualified you are instead of life. Yeah. You can't let your gifting define you. You let love define you. Your gifting will stay healthy and be a blessing all the days of your life. You follow me? So don't honestly desire the best gifts to feel more spiritual. I don't know why I'm telling you all that, but I'm just saying it. <laughs> yeah, it'll really help us. It, it, it protects you, it keeps you real free and clean in God and ministry. Man, if just pastoring, if just pastoring becomes someone's identity, then if things don't seem to be going well, they're wrecked at the cost of who they are. Yeah. Their son and daughter way before their pastor. Amen. Their son and daughter way before. <laughs> They're prophetic. They're son and daughter way before they have given something. Whatever they have. You see what I'm saying? They live from the place of being his. And when you say I'm yours over and over and over, there's something, when, when your worship leader says, I just keep hearing it, it's all I hear. So I pick up on stuff, I pay attention. I worship him, but I pay attention. I really do. <laughs> and uh, it means God said it's if God wants you to surrender, He wants you understanding that you're the platform. And the best thing you can do is yield. Like if we really believe He's Lord, we can trust Him. If, we, if He's really God, He sent His Son to die and shed His blood and His life for our lives so we can live. And I'm going to explain exactly what He did there and why He did that. Some people don't understand that because they see themselves for the way they've been and what they've done. You have to see yourself for who He created you to be and the creative value that He created man to walk in. What he loves about you is your destiny. He loves your potential when he's inside of you. He loves who you are when you're one with him. That's worth dying for. To God, that's worth shedding his blood for. To get you into agreement with what you were predestined to be before time was. To bring you back to the place of truth. Of your created value and destiny. He thinks is worth dying for. To get that resurrected. To get that back on track. He believes putting his son on the cross is worth getting that restored. That's amazing. Woo. Your whole life you probably heard Jesus died on the cross because we're sinners. I don't agree with that. He had to die because we sinned. But the reason he died is because we were lost sons and daughters. He came to seek and save that which was lost. That doesn't mean you're drunk in a back out. That means your identity and your purpose. Think with me. We preach this gospel, we've skimmed it. And we don't really get it. And if Jesus just died on the cross because you're a sinner, then you're always subject to sin. In the sense of being ruled by it, known by it. I'm going to talk about perfection here. But I don't think sin has to be as powerful as we meant it. Amen. You're not going to sell me into that thing anymore, man. I've been bought out here. I don't lose you. <laughs> I'm trying to behave a little bit. Ah, no, because it got to make sense, man. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> pray for me. 
It's not going to work if you do. <laughs> we think we have, we call it humility, that we have to boast in our ability to fail so much as that's to exalt God. No, we have to boast in His grace in us. What we are, we are by the grace of God. I didn't wake up today expecting to fail. I didn't wake up to try not to sin. I didn't wake up to live the Christian life. Amen. I woke up to enjoy being His and alive yeah. and forgiven Woo. and a son. Amen. That's called righteous conscience. So if I live righteous conscience, my fruit unto holiness without being trying not to sin. Oh, come on. try to change things and live better and not do the things you're not supposed to do. And that thing will pull on you and be in your face and you'll find yourself doing it and feeling condemned and backpedaling and wanting to love him and feeling unlovely and ah, ah, ah. Come on! Where Jesus finished and understand oh. what he did. Because yeah. if you start there, you'll run well. Yeah. Wow. I'm 17 years into this thing, there's a fire in my heart. Woo. Like, he loves me. Amen. Yeah. Like, my life's worth living. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. He made me for this day and time. Amen. He, like, he saw me back then now. And my day was to come. There was nobody could do to stop it. Nobody could stop it. Yeah. There's a time to be born in here. I'm the will of God. Yay. Yeah. See, a lot of people think that's heresy and blasphemy. Are you kidding? There's a time to be born. You're predestined before the foundation world to be a son, to be a daughter. He saw you before you were seen. I, 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 you guys won't get freaked out by it, but I can I get really get some funny responses in church. I say, listen, I'm not standing here because a man went into a woman. I'm standing here because God said so. Amen. A long time. I understand a man went into a woman, but that ain't why I'm here. <laughs> that one out of millions, those little squeakies racing to that egg. That one that got there and did the job <laughs> was me before time. That's right. You, you can swim as fast as you want, pal. You ain't beat me. Right. You ain't getting in there first. That's right. No <laughs> <laughs> wonder if I do believe that. <laughs> I was in the church the other day and I called them sperm and they all went. I said, listen, we'll just call them salmon. At least it's an S. <laughs> Racing up the canal in the air. And I said, and there I was in the little life raft. Eat your heart out, boys. It's me. You ain't getting in. It's me. Try as hard as you want. It's me. God gave me that vision a long time ago. I was worshiping God, and I saw myself in a little old black of life. Some guys was all steep and strong. was a mistake. Be honest. Yeah. You see, it's a common thought. Because you yeah. weigh it, you weigh your productivity, your lack of productivity, you weigh the way people treat you, success, all that stuff. And all of a sudden feelings, yeah, all of a sudden you're devalued. You're under the press. Your steam starts slipping. Your identity is gone. Next thing you know, you're living up to, if you will, the low-level view of yourself, if you follow me. It's the root, the root to most addictive behaviors, no matter what the behavior is. 
It doesn't just have to be drugs and drink of any. And uh, it's not knowing who you are. Yeah. Well, the only reason a man is bound to pornography, he doesn't know who he is. He just doesn't know who he is. Yeah. If he knew who he was, he wouldn't sell so cheap. He wouldn't even find pleasure in that because his flesh is dead and his spirit's alive. He wouldn't exploit the value of other human beings at the entertainment of his flesh. If you know who you are, things change. Their appeal changes. Their drive. Their draw. It changes. What used to have a voice doesn't have a voice anymore. It's not just about deliverance. It's not just about get free, get free, get free. No. See who you are. Know who you are through the cross. Rise up in truth and let truth make you free. It's not just about casting out a devil. It's about knowing who you are from the beginning. Come on. Get with me on this. I'm the will of God, so are you. You're sick. You're alive. You've got a body. You were born. You're the will of God. Every one of you in here, everybody I'm looking at was predestined before time. I got to that egg. I didn't tell the story, but I got to the egg. There was 499 million or so of the little squeakies there. At mom's egg. They had little safety glasses on. It's a true church. I wouldn't lie I'm in church. I wouldn't lie if I was in church. Watch this. They had jackhammers, saws, and drills. And they're trying to get in the egg. The blades were bent. The saw teeth were busted, smoking. The drills were the motors were blowing. He was trying to get in the egg. Somebody was trying to get in and it wasn't them, it was me. <laughs> oh my gosh. So. <laughs> so watch this. Go ahead, you messed me up. I'm in your house, I'm against you. So all of a sudden I get up there and they just split open like the Red Sea and you can see the egg. And I just went right inside the egg. And I heard all these voices when I was in there. How do you do that? How do you just get in there? How do you get in there? They're standing over the drills smoking, their saws was bent, jack cameras were busted. And from inside the egg I yelled real loud because it was me before the foundation of the world. There's a time to be born, and this is my time. I was hand chosen, it was me. And I was shouting out, and they went, and they went where all the other millions go, that it wasn't them. <laughs> it just disappeared. Isn't that awesome? So, you're not one of millions. Come on. You're one in them. Come on. There's a difference. Millions of opportunities on that day, guys. You see, is he talking about this? Yes. Because <laughs> this is the stuff that lies to us because you feel like you're happenstance, born out of due time, being, your, your life's a mistake, actually. Suicide, one of the biggest tragedies on the planet. It's a man's value getting so manipulated, his destiny so blind to his destiny that he takes something that's not his. Come on. It's life. It's not his. It's not yours. Your life's not yours. Your life was created for God's image. Your Bible teaches you. Now watch. I'm yours. I'm yours. Yours it was right on, man. He felt funny, but he did it anyway. I like that guy. He was like, sorry, it's all I hear. It, it was enough. There you are. I thought, I thought I ran you out of here, man. I thought you didn't run out of here on me. I like it. You did feel funny. You thought it was a little redundant a little bit. A little bit. But you went with it because it was in your heart. You had confidence that you were hearing it. But it was like, what else do I do? Right? Really? Be real. Is that what's happening? But you kept going. And then we did. I didn't think it was redundant. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was God speaking to the world. Yeah. And what he's saying is, you're, you're saying I'm yours. What you're saying is my life is yours. My ways are yours. My mindsets and thoughts. Everything that I ever thought I was, I'm canceling out. Everything I ever thought was truth, I'm canceling out. Everything, I'm yours. It's amazing. Because you have to understand this, that Jesus came 
And the Bible calls him the truth. That means before he came, must have been not the truth. <laughs> when he talked, people didn't understand him. He came and took a whole chapter of Matthew 6 and said, You say what I said. You say what I said. You, that means that we weren't saying what he said. Yes. I'm not saying anything that funny. You say what I say. What's that mean? That means what we were saying isn't what he says. If he's the light that came into the world, there must have been darkness. The light comes to expose darkness so men can see. Amen. Whoa. He's the truth. That means we were raised up and trained up in the law. Like, like every man for himself, survival, he said, she said. Did you ever hear this mentality growing up? Did you ever answer anybody like this? Watch this. Did you ever, did you ever do this? Well, hey, don't look at me, man. I wouldn't have said that if they wouldn't have. Well, they should have known about it. They should take it on my back, man. Well, I wouldn't have. So what are you doing now? You're justifying yourself, your life, at the expense of them and saying it was their fault. And in that place, you're actually allowing them to dictate who you are. You're saying, who I am right now is a living product of what they've just done. They've just molded me, fashioned me, and made me who I am. And you think you're getting them back. You think you're disdaining them. You think you're cutting them off. And they're controlling you through deception. You're becoming a product of their injustice. And the person you are in that moment is nothing more than a product of their own doing. That's ethics. Because we've done it our whole life and we thought it was normal. It's what he said, she said. Why would they have done that? She wouldn't have done that. Well, she should have known that. She shouldn't talk to me like that. Well, how would you feel? Well, put yourself in my shoes. That really hurt. Get off my back. Well, don't. If it didn't happen to you, don't. No, she takes me down. See what I mean? So what you're saying is that they have the right to dictate and govern your life. It's deception. It's because it's the fall of man, guys. It's the fall of man. we got to be born again. Now, I'm going to be real straight with y'all, okay? This isn't a heavy... I'm just going to be straight. You released me. You gave me permission. <laughs> How we got this idea in this country where the gospel is just a basket of blessings and God showing us provision, favor, and taking us to heaven, I'm not sure. Because the more I read my Bible, it's all about transformation and new life and putting off the old and putting on the new and understanding who we really are in the first place. This thing isn't just some promise of some rose garden. This is we made we made the whole if I would die tonight, don't know where I'm going, raise my hand, pray this prayer a while, now you can know. We made it all about fire insurance, get out of hell, free card, whatever. But it's get heaven back into me. Becoming one with him. If you don't get this, you'll be very confused in your walk. This this this, this I am yours has everything to do with what I'm saying. See, I am yours. Circumstances, circumstances never again, never again dictate who I am or who God is. Right. He's revealed through the Son. The cross exposes all. When you sing that song up there about my love is open here, come and receive it. I'm open wide to my heart. The cross is the measuring stick of God's love. Christ crucified is God's I love you, period. Yes. He has spoken through His Son. For you to say, well, if God loved me, then how come this? And if God loved me, then why is it? That's you turning back and making all about yourself, asking God to prove His love based on your circumstances and things working out the way you think they should this way. And you're missing the real love, which is Christ crucified, to get you out of that same mess that's deceiving you. Did I make sense on that? Did you grab that? See, because when you find fault with the gospel through your life, and you let life be your teacher, hmm. Jesus.
Jesus said you have one teacher, he's the Christ. Why do we let life teach us? Why is it cool in the church to define God through circumstances? Well, because this happened and this happened, God must be this. Stop that! We do it all the time. Well, you know, because this happened and then this happened, we work this way. God must be this, God must that. No! That doesn't mean nothing. Somebody could have been so in death over and over. Somebody could be ridden with their soul and somebody could just be living in fear. Sometimes bad things just happen. Right. Yeah. And we're creating doctrine through life. And Jesus' right. life is God revealed. Right. Yeah. He's our teacher. Life is not your teacher. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So when the church says, because this happened and this happened and well maybe this happened, and then we define God and then we say, well, I don't know, but if God loved me, then I don't know how come I should have never lost my job. I thought he was for me. What you're revealing is you're not in this because you love God. You're in this for what God can do for you. And you're set up to be frustrated and actually believe the lie of frustration and give yourself a right to walk off in some direction that's not him. Because now you're just another man, another woman with an attitude, with an issue, with an unresolved conflict, and even with God. And if we don't preach this gospel clear, we'll retain the right to have those kind of opinions, attitudes, mindsets, and even challenge God with that stuff. Look, I'm not in this thing because I need God. I'm in this thing because I love God. Satan doesn't believe any of us love God. He thinks you're here for what he can do for you. The devil believes every one of us come to church for what God can do for us. And in a lot of cases, he's right. Because there's so much discouragement, frustration, yep. lack of peace. Why? Because we don't think we're getting our fair shake. And God ain't doing things the way he should. Yep. My circumstances don't determine my love relationship. Oh, right. My love relationship determines circumstances and what I look like in the middle of it. The last I read, Christians in the fire don't smell like smoke. The last I read, it didn't change, did it? Christians in the fire don't smell like smoke. But if it's all about the fire, you're going to smell real good like smoke. Yeah. If it's all about what you're going through instead of what he went through to put his spirit in you and his image in you and his responses through you and his nature through you, when people are doing you wrong, why is it so easy to cry because of them? Well, we're created to cry for them. Get that? Yeah. The only reason it's easy to cry because of them instead of cry for them was man ate the tree and we all got born into Adam and we were all self-centered until Christ comes. Yeah. And then Christ models the life we're designed for, lays down his life, loves down his own life unto death, gives his life for humanity, and he said, he didn't say sing to me, pray to me, he said follow me. So he said, I'm the example, I'm all of the life you were designed for, I'm the truth, you've been living a lie, come out of the darkness, into the light, into the kingdom of the Son of His love, and follow Him. So I'm yours. I yield to you. All that I am is yours. And in a place of prayer, in a place of humility, in a place of just submission and, and yielding and continuing, nobody's looking, kneeling before Him. My life is yours. Teach me, Father. Holy Spirit, raise me up in truth. God, I want to live for the reason You made me. I want to bring You glory. God, my life is yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Look, when you're singing, I'm yours, and you got attitudes and issues, you ain't His. <laughs> you're yours in need of Him. <laughs> Is it all right if I tell the truth? Okay. Okay, you guys don't want me to like smudge up the truth, right? Please tell the truth. Because I can. You have to take the mic from me. <laughs> I won't. I love people. I don't please people. I love people. Yeah. yeah. Amen. It's just if you receive honor from one another. Yeah. <laughs> it's just how can you believe you receive and need honor from one another? I don't need your honor. I love you. Did you get that one? It was so good. <laughs> 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 
You'll see, if I need your honor, then I'm at the mercy of you. If you're having a bad day, I'm having a real day. Come on. And all of a sudden, people are my barometer. Circumstances in life dictates how well I'm doing. And all of a sudden, I'm no stronger than the weakest surround me. Isn't that something? But we live believing that's true our whole lives. And sometimes we come into the gospel because we know we've sinned, need change, God fix my broken pieces, God, I don't want to go to hell, I want to go to heaven. There's a lot of reasons people seem to come into the gospel, but if it's not the one reason we come into the gospel, these things won't change. No truth will invade those things, and the same hope will be the same. The way we think, the way that seems right to man will still lead our life. And if you hurt me, I'm hurt. You're not going to hurt me. I woke up to love you today. Not to count on you, but depend on you, and expect of you. You can never become my excuse to be less than his image. Oh, I was out of the streets. Why don't you go straight up? You guys aren't hurt, right? I smile the whole time I'm saying this, you know. I'm not evil. Yeah. See, if you hear the laugh, that's Holy Ghost anesthesia. When you do this kind of surgery, you just... <laughs> you don't even know you're being proud of you. You're like, look over and see what the is. It says, I'm seeing clear, I'm living clear, no matter what. It doesn't say, 
If my eyes are single, my whole body's low with light, unless, of course, I'm faced with many challenges and issues. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't say that. If my eyes are single, my whole body's low with light, unless my best friend just did me wrong. Come on. Come on. Why do we let everything move us but this gospel sometimes if we're not careful? Oh. Yeah. Don't you ever reduce the joy of what I experienced. I'm not saying you did. I'm not passionate right now. I love you. Don't you ever allow what I experienced, the joy of what I experienced, to turn into something that you're trying to find or hide behind or something, and then leave here and be less than what I experienced in this life. Amen. If yeah. you teach yourself religion, you'll, 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 no. Come on. Communion and union with God is way richer than you that just attach into a movement to find your identity. Come on. Yeah. Say that. It's just on my heart. I'm not being mean. I'm not putting down this. What you guys did tonight was awesome. I look at my buddy Josh. This is crazy. You get up there and say, I said, this is ridiculously awesome. You tore it up. Yeah. But I watched you guys jumping, shouting, and singing. And I'm thinking, man, you're not coming here trying to find a place of joy. You're doing this because you found the place of joy. Yeah, that's right. In here. Yeah. You're not just trying to hide away your tears and find some yeah. magic touch. Yeah, come on. Don't ever allow this thing to become some mask you wear. Because if you leave this atmosphere and go out there touching, you'll be touched. Yes. You can leave this atmosphere and go out there vulnerable and susceptible to man's words, to man's actions, to fairness, to rightness, to wrongness. And you're going to miss God horribly. And if you're not going to understand it, then you're going to think God failed. And why did he let this happen? And why did he not? And then you have all these excuses in your flesh to remain the same and be disturbed. Are you guys all right? I told you I was going to bring it to get serious. I think they will. to see what her heart is crying out for. And I thank you, Lord God, that she gets it. She just gets it. Not in her head, God, but in her heart. And I thank you that she looks in the mirror and begins to see what you've always seen. And I thank you that guilt, condemnation, and shame are over for her. That the days of striving and struggles are over for her. I thank you, Lord God, that there's a day of grace that's come even now, right now, God. And I thank you that she's going to walk in the joy and the simplicity of the finished work of Christ. And I bless you, sweetheart. I bless you, my sister in the Lord. I bless you. The one that has qualified through the blood of the Son. I bless you, daughter of the King. I bless you. Mm. I love you with all my heart. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, God. gather in a place like this, it should be for one strong reason. There's a lot of reasons, but one strong reason. There's a lot of reasons, so I'm not making some serious list. Because you gather for corporate worship, corporate prayer, the strength of just community in the Lord, encouragement, sharpening strength, all that. So there's a million things that, that accomplish when we get together. There's one main reason to come together, to be sharp and look more like you. Yeah. So that when you leave this place, you look more like you than what you can. Yeah. And if that's the priority in your heart, like tomorrow, you don't just come to service because it's Sunday and that's what Christians do. Come on, that is God is lame. Yeah. Yeah. It's religious. Yeah. Don't even do that. Shake yourself out. Right. 
Or you or you or you gonna you gonna rush to get here and be frustrated trying to get here and yelling at the kids and mad at your spouse for not getting them up soon enough and all that and then you're gonna find and all you're trying to do is pull off church. Come on. Yeah. And then church becomes a Christian thing to do. Yeah. You are the church. This is just the blessing of a meeting house. I'm looking at the church. Yeah. Are you following? Yeah. So listen. When you come together, come together with the reason of God fathering you, sharpening you, equipping you, and fashioning your heart in Him, so that when you leave here, you look more like a father than before. Amen. If you have, any, I'm going to be straight with you. If you have any other motive and reason in your Christianity, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be deceived. You're going to misread. Bad things happen to me is no reflection on God. Yeah. God sent His Son yeah. and raised Him from the dead. Somehow, in bad things, we forget the part God played, <coughs> like the answer. Uh, Look, He never promised you. He said, "Many are the afflictions of the righteous." Yeah. And I come here to preach some and prophesy some doom gloom thing and say, "Troubles on the horizon." What I'm saying is the same storm comes to the wise and the foolish. Yeah. It's not because, why is God letting me go through this? What did I do wrong? What door did I open? Why is it done? <laughs> Hello? Sometimes bad stuff just happens, just comes. The whole thing is by you being squeezed, Christ ought to be coming out. Now, if you told you have cancer, you're going to die, you're not even praying because you're afraid to die. You're praying you have covenant promise 
of life, and your legacy will be it's not even about dying from cancer. It's about fulfilling the will of the Lord. And how many times do we pray because the problem? Because we're driven by fear. Why? Because we've proven all these things that we're living for ourselves, incorporating the gospel into us, hoping it helps us. And it's designed to transform us. Come on, I came to bring it. Talk to it. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not being too rapid fire with it. I'm worse sometimes. I'm being gentle. No, I am. So you get it. You get it. Yeah. Look, the only reason I'm praying if I have a bad diagnosis is because I'm afraid of diagnosis and my welfare. That prayer is, is, is fear driven by need. It's not faith working through love. Jesus. Come on. Love casts out all fear. Faith working through love. My faith doesn't come just because I found a promise and have a Bible principle to back it up. Faith comes because he loves me yeah. in the face of the diagnosis. And the diagnosis doesn't challenge his love because his love is settled through the cross. Yeah. The measuring stick of God's love is already settled. So come hell or high water, he loves me. Come on. Yeah. Woo. God loved me, why does he let me go through this? If he didn't love you, why did he put his son through that? Yeah. We ask the wrong questions. We ask self-serving questions. And we give ourselves away to the devil and make ourselves easy targets. And then we wonder why everything bad happens to me. Because you set up. I know. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. You guys are right. <laughs> Come on, try to help. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, if you don't love life, you don't love life the death. If you're not really on yours, on yours, on yours, you're going to fall into these traps. And even though you love God and your heart is sincere and you didn't wake up with evil intention today, the lack of understanding is crushing your life. The proverb says, in all you're getting, get understanding. It doesn't say in all you're getting get blessings. No. In all you're getting get a fuller vat and barn. Hey, that would be nice. But in all you're getting, get understanding. Because what I see, I become. Yeah. How can I defend against the lie unless I have a stronghold of truth to expose it? Yeah. I can't even discern a lie if I don't have oh. truth. Yeah. The lie sounds normal. Yeah. The lie sounds like truth. But once I shine light on that thing, it's the darkness that gets exposed. And you start removing it, I start to see it in another way that's probably going to go away. Come on. Amen? Amen. You guys good? We all are. Excellent. Okay, where are we? I threw a lot of stuff out there. I'm just feeling this stuff. My heart is just feeling it. It oh, keeps me sharp. I feel born again every time I preach. Yeah. Yeah. I think I just need to go get baptized again. <laughs> Do you know why we get baptized? Because it's a sign that you're dying. Yep. That's true. Yeah. It's a covenant sign yeah. that you're dying. You don't get water baptized because it's some church with me. You were baptized because it's symbolic to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And you die in the likeness of his death so you can raise in the newness of life. <laughs> Two verses later, so if we die in the likeness of his death, Romans 6, then surely we'll raise in the, in the power of his resurrection. What's the death he died? He died to sin once for all. I'm talking about the act of sin. I'm talking about the identity of sin. If your identity towards sin changes, your actions in sin change. That's the way the gospel works. You're saved by grace through faith. But you have to believe who God says you are. And you're worth dying for. See, my whole life, I said this earlier. Jesus died on the cross because you're a sinner. Jesus died on the cross because you're a sinner. That's what we proclaim all the time. And you leave people with the identity of sin. He died on the cross because I sinned. But I was never created to be a sinner. I was created to be a son. Amen. So does the cross expose my sin or remove my sin? So if it removes my sin, now what? You're a son. So if it removes my sin, what do I have now left? Right. Somebody help me. Right. What? The Lamb of God who took it away. What did he do? Took it away. So he became what I was so I could become what he is. He's a son. He was made to be sin. Yeah. 
sin. He didn't sin. He was made to be sin. It was a legal action. It was, it was imputed to him. He died as sin. So what did God do? Curse his son? No. He cursed what was killing us. Right. Sin. God cursed sin in the flesh, and sin shall have no dominion over you. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made you free from the law of sin and death. What happened? God took what was killing us, what we were never made to be, what never was our identity from the beginning. He took it off of us, imputed it onto his son, and what? I'm looking back here because usually there's a cross. There it is. <laughs> so, so, so when God puts up anything hanging on a pole yeah. is cursed by God. Was his son hanging on a pole or was he made to be sin? So what did God curse on the pole? Jesus or sin? Whoa. See, when God made man, he blessed man. Yeah. It's in Genesis. Well, God blessed him. He turned around cursing. God blessed them because your created value is to be blessed and sin brought a curse. He made his son sin and curse what was killing us. So the blessing. Yeah. Remember Galatians 3? Christ became a curse for us so we could receive the original inheritance that was promised to Abraham and that blessing. So does the cross expose sin or remove sin? We've established that. Remove sin. So guess what it exposes? The cross exposes your value. Whoa. How much your life is worth living when you Whoa. understand the truth. Wow. That every day is worth waking up. Sure. That God's mercy gives you one more day Whoa. to wake up and look like your daddy. Yeah. And if you turn this gospel into blessings and favor and answer prayer, you're going to be disappointed. Wow. Yeah. This gospel is all about pursuing his image. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about I am yours, I am yours, and clay yielding to the master Whoa. potter's hand. So all the creativity and all the mastery of the, of the Lord and the vision of your life can be made complete in that clay. Whoa. God, you're his workmanship, Amen. created in Christ for good works. What's first? Amen. Knowing who you are, knowing you're his, and the good works flow out of that. Uh, you're not trying to bear good fruit. Amen. You're enjoying being a good tree. Because yeah. good trees have to bear yeah. good fruit. Yeah. If you're trying to bear good fruit, you're declaring you don't know what kind of tree you are. Then you're trying to affirm your yeah. tree by your fruit. Yeah. yeah. No, you affirm the fruit by the tree. Come on. An apple tree isn't an apple tree because it bore apples. Whoa. It bore apples because it's an apple tree. In fact, it was an apple tree in the sea. <laughs> and we hear, we, hear, we hear Jesus say amazing things like, a good tree can't bear bad fruit, and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. Therefore, you know a tree by it. And then we hear in condemnation and judgment and go, oh. and we're afraid to even look at our tree. Or if we do, it's introspective. They just see, oh my. Bad tree can't bear good fruit. Good tree can't bear bad fruit. I'm a bad tree. <laughs> That's what we think. He's saying, here's what he's saying it's an identity thing. You don't know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you won't produce what you're created to produce. Exactly. And if you know who you are, you can't produce what you weren't created to produce. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. He says, so make a tree good, and it's... So there's hope for every tree. <laughs> so you can go, my life really messed up. But then just make the tree good. <laughs> so what do you do with living for yourself? Come on, why are you chasing those empty things? Why? Don't you just get along, kneel, and say, God, I've been living for me, and it's time to yield to your purposes. The Holy Spirit, help me. Just wreck me inside. Just cause me to see truth. But I know the way I'm thinking, the way I'm motivated, the way I'm pursuing every day is not producing good things, and I feel like a roller coaster. Yes. And 
God, I surrender myself to you. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, if any man come after me, let him pray a prayer to go to heaven. He did not say that. He says, if any man come after me, let him first deny what? Why is that first? Because you were never made for you. You were made for the image of God. Let us make man in our image. And in the likeness of God, he made man. Well, we haven't looked a whole lot like God. Before the cross, before Christ came out. Some of us struggle to be like, oh, no, the cross is coming and Christ has come. Why? Because we get our eyes off the truth, we get back onto ourselves, and flesh, and human reasoning, and people, and he said, she said, and the way that seems right to man just keeps driving us, even though we've incorporated this confession. You guys all right? Are you still all right? Yeah. Well, I came to teach you something. It's the strongest things all my life is the impartation of the truth. It's not just calling up and honoring and touching you. It's, it's truth. Truth will make you free. Truth will make you free. Truth will make you free. Woo! You know, he said, go make a bunch of confessing Christians. Amen. He said, go make disciples. He said, if you continue in my word, you're my disciple. Yeah. Wow. yeah. If you continue in my word. Right, come on. Look, I'm not putting anything down we did tonight. But he didn't say if you continue in everything we did tonight. That's all part of knowing him through his word. Worship begins with an angel of God. When you see who God really is, worship just comes up and out of your heart. Yeah. He's worthy of every experience. When you get face to face with him, all you can do is adore yeah. you, I honor you, you're amazing. God, words can't even dirt God. <laughs> right? So this isn't like some church thing. Just move it up, jam it out, get some cool musicians, some good voices, create a good sound. Come on, all that's cool. But that's not, he's the one we worship. It's just, yeah. <laughs> so I'm not saying we did anything wrong tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Let us make men in our image and the likeness of God he made men. Why did Jesus come to seek and save that which was lost? What was lost? Who man was created to be was lost. When Adam was the day you eat the tree is the day you surely did Adam fall over dead when he ate the tree. But did God mean he said, did something have to die? Yeah. If God said the day you eat the tree is the day you surely die, did something die? Yes. yes. What died? Spirit. Who he was. And ever since that day, man has been in the rat race of trying to find himself yes. through life and through one another. And we've been hurt, disappointed, angry, frustrated, cut off, suicidal, a wreck. And even the ones that have stronger personalities and seem to be successful and seem to reach the top still have the deficit because it's still a man for himself and now you're self-made and you're still a rat. You can win a rat race, you're still a rat. <laughs> They're fruit watching all the time. Oh, They're looking at the tree. Fruit watching, fruit watching, fruit watching. Why are you fruit watching? Why are you trying to fruit watching? You can be being a good tree. You can thank you, God. My life is so on purpose. I so appreciate the love you have for me. Thank you that the blood was enough and sufficient and I am washed of all my sin and all those evil ways because my heart is to love you, to serve you, to walk with you. God, I give us a you. That's called being a good tree. And if you wake up believing that, and you walk by the full ounce barrel on the way out to work and go, Whoa, are you kidding me? Dude, you're incredible. <laughs> Sir, I see, I've done this way more than once. I look right down there and I see this guy filled with Jesus. He's looking right back at me. And I look right up to him and I say, Dude, I see Jesus. And I get real close to my face and I'm right in that mirror. Big smile. I said, I can tell you, believe his love. You can see the power of his love. I see his spirit. I got your countenance that reveals his glory. And I look in your eyes, I see his love. Sir, I'm going to ask you, why are you standing here with the world needs when I see you just go? <laughs> Swear. Awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that sure beats. Oh, God. Another day at work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
traffic on this red bus yesterday. <laughs> Flash. What? Huh? You bet. <laughs> That's just crazy stuff. We've been talking that stuff for a whole lot. Father, you know it now, man. Six o'clock on the green, man. Oh, God. Uh, then you torture yourself and hit that snooze thing. <laughs> It was a time I hated me. I didn't like me. 
love, it's important. Because you love God with everything you are, you love your neighbor as yourself. And if I see me clear, I got a real good look at you. Because if I see how God sees me and I receive that, then I see how God sees you. God sees you. You get it? But if I love my neighbor as myself and I don't love myself, and I'm fault finding and nitpicking and I got issues and secret closets and denial and mathware, then I'm going to fault find, criticize, and find out and see everything else that's wrong with everyone else because it takes the pressure off of me and all of a sudden I'm loving my neighbor just the way I love myself. No wonder we have so many issues because we don't see ourselves clear. Right, right. Come on. Amen. Amen. What an amazing gospel, amazing gospel. We have a God. See, in most religions, in most religions, I don't have to name them, but you just pick them out, you can just pull them out of that, man. In most religions, it's them, like, dying for their God. It's, 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 look, if you, if you got a Buddhist or a Hindu man, I'm not picking on one particular, I'm just making a point here, so don't take that heavy. But you got, you got, you, they got all their little gods. They, some of them religions got a thousand gods, man. And, and, and if a hurricane would come, or a tornado would come, or an earthquake would come, and a house is falling down and collapsing on the table of God, that man, in his commitment, he would die on the table and embrace and try to protect. He died trying to protect those shrines. And the people would read, man dies trying to protect his God, save his God. Wow. That's how they could, they're committed like that. They, regiments and legalist regiments and stuff, and they, you know. But the gospel is the total opposite. God came to die to save his name. So there's no way to work your way to him. You receive him and become like him by grace. It's not works, it's grace. By grace you've been so to say through faith. Faith is important, it works through life. Grace and faith go hand in hand. No faith. No grace. You wake up in the morning, open up your heart wide, no matter what time, no matter how you rather <laughs> you say, I'm so glad to be alive. Thank you for the people around me. Thank you for the job, though. See, because sometimes people get this Christian mindset and they give themselves away when they pray. They're like, God, I'm so tired of going to this job. Why do you let that boss treat me that way? God, if you love me, you wouldn't let him steal on me. And you get this in your mind, and all the time you say this song, you know, you. It, it, it'd be like you twisted that Christian song, it's all about me, uh -huh. it's all about you. Oh. Oh my gosh. Come on, why would you let the boss do that to me? God, if you really love me. God, why would you let the co workers just criticize me? Why don't you shut your mouths? Why don't you knock them all down my horse like Paul? Seriously, Christians think that way, talk to the Lord that way, and call it prayer. Yeah. And you say, I've been praying for my workplace for a long time, I don't know why it ain't changing. <laughs> There's zero love in it. It's all about you. Yes. It's a complaint session. Take You're it. fault finding. That's You're right. frustrated with the world around you. Amen. See, in my life, I used to think if God would tweak you a little, the world would be a better place. <laughs> if He just come and tweak you a little, it, Cool. I've never thought for a minute that it was me who wanted to change. Are you guys alright? I'm not nipping anything tonight. Oh, that's good. Tell the truth. You want these little foxes that come in and spoil the precious fruit of the vine? No. You want them things exposed. You want them things written by your life and your mind. You don't even want to give yourself permission for the flesh. You live by the Spirit. Yes. It says if you live by the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of the flesh wants to draw on its rights. It wants to claim rights. I was talking to Josh on the way down here. I said, you know, the Lord's been showing me, a, I've been preaching on love a lot, and coming up, and what it looks like. It really rocks people because we have learned how to defend ourselves with for ourselves. And it's not that we're evil. We're not making up evil. Some of us have, we know we need a Savior. We know Jesus is our way. But we don't understand that he wants to transform our lives and make our nature equal yeah. with his. He wants us to become up. Yeah. First Timothy 1 5 says the goal of all our instruction, yeah. the purpose of the commandment is God. Yeah. So the finished work of Christ isn't fulfilled when man prays prayer to go to heaven. Yeah. The 
finish what the crisis of filled man's nature is changed back to what he was made to be. Let us make man in our image. In the likeness of God, he made man. What's God? God is love. The day you eat the trees, the day you surely die. What died? Love died. Man became a God unto himself, self-centered, self-concerned, self-defending, self-protecting. When God asked how he knew he was naked, did he eat the tree? Blame the no God and the woman. Did you eat the tree? I heard you know you were naked. Did you eat the tree? Come on, that's a simple yes or no question. Yeah. <laughs> and he modified his answer and said, well, oh, it was the woman you gave me. She gave me to eat. I mean, if you, when you gave me her,
Are you getting this? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, the church, we don't understand this. Because you go home that scenario, you call four friends, and they say, I can't believe they did that to you. You must be trash. You wrote a call. Come here, baby. Oh. And we sympathize. And we make one a victim and one a villain. Jesus. And if Jesus saw us that way, he never shed his blood for you. Jesus. Come on, man. I'm on this thing. I ain't playing. This thing was serious. Why is it so easy to go home and find your spouse in that situation? You get all this Christian counsel. Well, you should never eat it. You deserve more than that. You'll never be able to trust again. You need to go find them. You only got one life to live. It's going quick. You better hurry and go find them. <laughs> and the only person you're crying for is you. Wow. And I thought you denied yourself. Yes. I thought you picked up your cross. Wow. Picking up your cross means treated unjustly. Did Jesus deserve to die? No. Even a little bit? But did he? Did he die? Yeah. Was he guilty? No. But did he be judged as guilty? Yeah. Did he complain? Did he even open up his mouth? No. It's called carrying the cross. No. It's called walking through every injustice, every unfairness. Why is it so easy to cry because of people instead of cry for them? Why is the spouse broken and devastated instead of broken and devastated for their spouse? Because we have a lot of self stuff going on there. It's all right if somebody comes along like me and smiles around there and talks straight. Because what? If what I'm saying is not true, then the power of our identity rests in the actions of others instead of Christ. And all of a sudden, people are Lord instead of Jesus. And all of a sudden, one human being has the power to determine me, and that one human being should be him. So if I'd go home and I'd find that situation at home, and I go home with mom, how has Christ changed? How has my identity changed? See, everything that's established in me should flow into that situation. And I should respond like Christ. Now, I don't say that because I'm heavy, because there's a lot of mess going on in a lot of folks' lives. And we've been through a lot of stuff. But listen, what you didn't understand and what you didn't know this is what you're responsible for. Jesus said, if you were blind, you wouldn't be guilty. We've made a lot of mistakes. In this room, there's been a lot of things we've done that if we saw different, we do different. So what I'm saying is to bring condemnation and guilt and shame. What I'm saying is to bring present day truth so that we live in that truth Amen. the rest of the days of our life. Amen. It's not to bring regret. It's not to cause you to say, oh man, if I should have this, maybe I shouldn't have that. I wonder why I did this. Because that's, that's regret produces death. It's to sharpen you now so you don't live in the same old way and build a resume of just hurt and pain and whatever. Are you following me? Yeah. Do you see why we talk like this in the church? Because we should be strengthening ourselves to love. Yeah. Yeah. Not strengthening ourselves to have another reason to be hurt. Yeah. <laughs> because the average Christian is walking in hurt. They sympathize with people that get hurt. No, it's all right. It's a good thing. You should be fine. You just sit there and let him love him. It's all good. Truth's coming. Yeah. Truth's powerful. Yeah. What you don't know and don't see is destroyed. Yeah. When truth comes, it changes. Yes, it does. See, like, I can look in the eyes and tell you, you just can't hurt me. You can do me wrong. But you can't hurt me, bud. <laughs> I would, when I'm all alone, I would pray for you and cry. And I would have mercy in my heart. So if you would treat me that way, what would it show me? that you don't know who you are. Right. And you don't know who I am. Yeah. So you just need truth, man. You don't need, I don't need justice. Oh. He needs truth. <laughs> so I'd go home at night and I'd pray, not mad, not hurt. God, why did you let him do that? You can't let him get away with that. Uh, no, Father, would you have mercy on that man? If he had any idea who he was, he would have never said, if he was filled with your spirit, he would have never, God, would you show him? And see, that prayer goes to heaven. And heaven hears, probably come in the middle of the night when he's not looking, he's coming to me. <laughs> Mercy, don't get into it. But you're at home praying stuff like, God, I can't believe you're going to have me. Why would you let them treat me like that? God, I'm supposed to know and trust them. God, I can't trust anybody. I don't even want to go to church. <laughs> Boy, you're sure giving away now. The devil's saying, Ooh, you're easy. Yeah. Throw a few more blows, you're about out now. 
now you are justified in your lack of understanding in all the things that are produced in Christ. And you're just another hurt statistic, and yet you're created to be a son or daughter. You guys all right? Yeah. Is yeah. this too intense? Is this all right? Yes, it's right. Because this is a hot topic, man. This is intense. Because there's people in this room that your spouse did that stuff. Look, what was, was. What, what happened now? But man, we can get a grip now. We can see now. There was a time in my life that thought would have happened to me. Hands down, I know how to respond. <laughs> and if I wasn't big bad enough at the time, I'd have found some way to be big bad enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sneak up from behind or something. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've lived for myself and I've lived in love. Love is what we're made for. Yeah. It's the freest place ever. People see me and I'm, I got joy. People see me and I'm always a certain way and I got passion. And they're like, man, I want what you got. It's become love. That's what I got. His name is Jesus. Oh, yeah. You say, lay hands on me. I want what you got. <coughs> you ain't going to get it by me laying hands on you. Not this one. You can get some gifts. You, know? you ain't going to get what I got by it. No. It's by believing and receiving. You guys get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a good day. Oh my gosh, is he got eight? I looked at my clock now and showed You got all them kids? Where's the smooth bike? No, you got them kids? That's my stuff. Not one of them is the smooth bike. Well, I'm quick. We're going to preach tomorrow, too. We've got to serve tomorrow. I don't need to get all the way tonight. You guys do late church, man, don't you? I'm not, I'm not being mean. Because there's a time to be ministered to, there's a time to 
afraid to about it. Save 17 years, and I don't even relate to even from the time I got saved. I don't know that I've ever been ministered to it in order in my life. But I prayed for thousands and understand the power. But you know what set, set me free? Truth. Yeah. So you know what I ministered? Truth. Yeah. 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 I believe it's our best friend. It's not letters on the page. It's a person. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He's the truth. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Colossians. This is funny. Since you were raised with Christ, the Bible might say, yeah, if he's not questioning your salvation, he's not saying, now, if you're really saved, Seek the things which are you say in sense. It's a little Greek word, if in sense. Since then you were raised with Christ. Seek the things which are where? Above, Above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Now why are we going to do that? We're going to set our mind. You see how gracious God is? He says, guys, set your mind. Why? Because he knows your mind will want to drift and, and, and try to go with the natural knowledge, the way that he's right to man, that same old, same old, right? So you've got to set your mind on the things above. Why? Because you're living on the earth. You got human opinion all around you. You have feelings and emotions that are trying to speak to you all the time. Yeah. Do you know what I feel like we've done in the church a lot? We spend a lot of time ministering to feelings, emotions, to senses, to flashbacks, to memories, to impressions, instead of building faith for truth. Right. Right. We've taught people it's okay to live by your feelings, so we minister to people if they're not feeling good. Right. Yeah. I'm just being real. We have taught people that if you're not feeling good, you're not doing good. And there must be a reason why you're not feeling good. And then we bring in ministry and then we're trying to... And we, and we think if we have a bad memory, there's something wrong with us. <laughs> if you have a bad memory, that's just a familiar spirit flashing you back. Or your mind, your emotions, your memory flashing back. How your heart responds is the big deal. Who's ever had a bad memory and wish you didn't have it? See, that's a good thing you wish you didn't have it. What's that mean? That means your heart's been pure by the gospel, purified. But if you don't understand that, you think because you had the bad memory, something's still bad about you. And then you're again, you're trashed again. And now you're repenting for something you're not. The fact that you care about the thought means you're changed. So, I, so what is that? Pray for the thought to go away? Come on. Open a bottle of oil and anoint your head so the thought goes away? You overcome lies with truth. Wow. The weapons of your warfare are mighty in the breaking down of strongholds. They take every thought captive. Yeah. So when your mind starts working against you and your heart goes, yuck, you ought to lift your voice and say, God, I so thank you that I'm transcendent. There was a time in my life, I this and all that. But God, you put a brand new heart in me, a brand new way. I'm your child. You redeemed me. Restored. Yet, all of a sudden, you're separating yourself from the lie through truth, casting down the lie, standing free. You don't need prayer. You need to rejoice in truth. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was holding the mic like this, and the man was introducing me in the service. And a video went through my head that I watched way before Jesus. You got the point. A video I didn't need to watch. But I did. I did. A dead man did. Zahia, so you couldn't even you couldn't even entice me in that video. Now I would lay hands on you and guess the devil out. Because I see it for what it is. There was a time it entertained me. There was a time it caught my attention and pulled my sword. And I'm in the Holy Ghost. I'm in my gifting, my calling. I'm in the right place. I mean, they introduced me and the music was right. I had a mic there. The music was right and everything. It was worship. And he said, Dan, you're be coming up here to worship. I'm just giving you liberty. Da, 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 da. And the music was all so just slow and dry. And, was, oh. and I get this stupid video in my head. Out of the blue. Now, I don't want to see that video. Tracy, I didn't conjure that thing up. I'm not sitting here musing on that and then preaching the gospel. But it was there. It was vivid. It was like I was watching it just yesterday. But it was years ago. And I'll tell you what, the music was right and the atmosphere was quiet. But now you just touched me wrong. See, so I ain't going to I'm the weapons of my warfare are out now and they're mine. I got a big sword ready. Yeah, you shouldn't poke me that way. 
was out of the blue, man. It scared the worship leaders. If you were a worship leader, you'd have thought, man, that guy's way out of the out of the heat. I don't even pay. I wasn't trying to do church. I wasn't trying to be fancy and fit in. I'm living Jesus. And if you're going to be a devil and poke that thing in my mind, you're getting crushed. And here's what I did. Something like this. Father, I just worship you and thank you, God, that you have made me a brand new man. God, I thank you that you cured me. And I started praying like I was the only one in the room. And the worship thing was sweet and slow, and everybody's afraid to speak and move, and some people are half paralyzed in the presence of the Lord. And I just started a tangent proclaiming truth. Why? Because truth makes you free. Why? Because you submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. It's a one step program. I am not trying to punch the devil in the mouth, I am standing in truth. Yes. To fight the good fight of faith means to stand in the position you're placed through Christ. And all the finished work of Christ is who you are all the time, period. Amen. Though faith doesn't mean fight the devil. I challenge you. Look everywhere in the New Testament. Though faith, contending for the faith, walking in the faith, never has to do with the battle or with the enemy. It always has to do with you standing in identity through Christ's finished work. Oh, yeah. And not losing sight of who you are in the face of every. So here I am just shouting and carrying on. Father, I love you. You've put your heart in me. I thank you the old man is dead. There's a brand new man, alive and well, filled with the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And I went ballistic with it. Thank God I preached the whole gospel. People started, they started entering in. People started making their own confessions. And it's just the atmosphere changed because one man was in warfare. But that's warfare. Now I find you, devil. I break your power. I have the mind of Christ. Come on. That doesn't take away the lie. Right. That makes you tired and gets you to question why it's not working. Right. You crush a lot of the truth. Yeah. Not bleeding blood over your mind. <laughs> Walk all day. I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Beep videos. How does quoting you have the mind of Christ take away the memory of the video? Truth. It's a weapon of your warfare. You bring everything captive into obedience according to Christ. Yes. It's true. Yes. So guess what happened? Watch. So I'm praying. I'm, I'm all fired up. And all of a sudden I look over at this man. And he's sitting about where the second row of ladies are. And he's about Third. And I just pointed to him. I said, Sir, you have herniated disc in the middle of your back. He was just, I didn't even know them. I've never seen them alive. He said, Yeah. I said, Not anymore. It's being healed. He said, It's on fire. I said, I know. It's being healed. And I walked over and I said, Ma'am, so you sit in the second row right here. I said, Ma'am, I don't know what's growing in your ankle, what's on your foot, but there's a tumor. There's something. She said, Oh my God, there's a tumor. In I said, Check it. It's not there anymore. Bam. It's like, Bang, bang. Pop. It was fun. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure all that would even happen if I wouldn't saw the video. We think we have a problem. No, I have a big answer. I'm not a man with a problem. I have an amazing answer. What's the big deal because a video ran through my book? God is mercy and the power of Holy Ghost lines way bigger than the flashback. And all of a sudden, I'm walking in an anointing that I might not have perceived if it wasn't for the increased revelation through worship, through yea, through Jesus as Lord. Or, or, I could have passed the mic to Josh because he's probably more anointed right now, cleaner thoughted, and maybe a little more holier than I go to repent for something I'm not. Come on, I'm teaching this thing. Like I'm ready to preach. He's trying to get me to second guess my heart, to, to claim something I'm not, to repent for something I'm not, to get insecure, to step out of the anointing, to step out of sonship, and to backtrack and start as a man with a problem instead of an answer. 
Now, come on. Some of you have enough history in this room and enough past that if it was that complicated, oh my goodness, come on. Your mind can take you there every day. Regret produces death. The God of sorrow brings repentance. And as soon as you're sorry about the thing you remember, as soon as you wish you did, oh my God, what was I thinking? It means you're changed and the gospel's come and purified your life. Or you're going to go on this rat race of just trying to never again have a memory of yesterday and never again have a bad thought. Come on. Bad thoughts are a dime a dozen, sorry to tell you. Right. You catch them down. say three months here in curse words in my head. And they were directed to the person of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know nothing about the scriptures blasphemy the Holy Spirit. I didn't know none of that stuff. But I was feeding on the word. I was so saved. I was so hungry for God. I love God with all my heart. And yet I'm hearing these stupid words and then I couldn't stop. People said, we well, only have to saved. You needed deliverance. You needed healing. No, no, no. There was a lying spirit whispering in my ear. I sat on my bed and cried and said, Holy Spirit, I don't feel this way about you, he said, no. I said, well, then why am I hearing this? I don't want to hear this. What do I do? He said, Dan, every time you hear those words, tell me how you feel. Yeah. Say that. I said, you are so wise. Say that. Yeah. See, because we're shallow, and we think because I'm hearing it, I have a problem. Yeah. We think the thoughts in my mind are who I am. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The finished work of Christ is who I am. The thoughts in my mind need to submit and line up and agree with truth. And I'm going to cast down everything until that happens. Are you following me? Yeah. Or your mind's a war zone, man. Devil's taking cheap shot after cheap shot after cheap shot. Come on, I'm being real. I'm telling you, I heard. And, I, and every time these thoughts came, I said, Holy Spirit, I love you. You are so my best friend. You lead me in truth. You reveal Jesus. You exalt me through my life. You're amazing. We'll never be a part of you. <laughs> Talk to Holy Spirit. After six months, I had such an intimacy with Holy Spirit that I'd never had if it wasn't for the voice. And we think when I have the voice, I have a problem. No, I have one big, amazing answer. Come on. Wow. So what the devil is doing to break me, he's running the risk of making me. Come on. And we think we have a problem. You ready for one more real personal, real humble example? This young girl, I'm a pastor, so I get thrown into a lot of stuff. And sometimes it seems like too much information, right? This lady called me and she wanted to meet with me and she was a, a said she was a sex addict. And I'm like, okay, honey. She said, no, God's been ministering to me. He's making me free. I just want to come to church and start to go in her church. Da, 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 da. She gets talking about her sexual addiction. Then she starts telling me that all her partners are men that's the age of her dad. And I don't know if there's a connection. I just need to so She said, I mean, how old are you, sir? And I told her, and she said, yeah, that age. And I'm like, this is getting weird. Yeah. So she comes in for an appointment. We meet and talk. I pray with her, and she leaves. And I'm like, you know, really put the truth into her. Man, she has no strings in me. There's nothing. I, I'm not telling you. I'm just telling you. You know, if you come and try to seduce me, I'm just so handsome for 40. I just don't. You've got nothing for me if it's not Jesus. Yeah. I'm not living for a moment in the flesh. I don't ever sell out for us. I'm living for Jesus. Yeah. But three days later, out of the blue, without any thought, I'm driving, I'm passionate all the time. I'm involved with people constantly. Three days later, I'm heading home, I'm about a half mile from my house, and a picture, a fantasized type picture pops in my head. It's not in my subconscious, I'm not meditating on it, I'm not thinking when she says that on the phone, boy, I wish I wasn't safe for 20 minutes or so. I feel bad for her, I hurt for her, I want her free. I'm a little weirded out by some of this stuff. I'm afraid of her, I sent her home. And it's the last phone. But out of the blue, I'm driving, and this picture comes into my head of me with this woman, and it's not a good picture. I'm just being real. Is it okay if I'm real? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if I don't know who I am, if I'm struggling with my own identity, I'm insecure, I'm calling you for prayer because I'm a twisted minister, and i got some twisted thing going on in my heart. Are you kidding me? I look myself in the eyes in the mirror, and go, i got a twisted thing in my heart. I have no desire to miss God. I have no desire to be with that woman. 
But that stupid picture was in my head. So what did I do? If you were in my truck, you'd have got scared. Because I'm just driving. And as soon as that picture hit me, I crushed that stuff, man. I ain't playing. I said, Father, I thank you for the gospel. Ha! And I just started to praise him for a heart that's pure, a life that's changed. I started blessing my family and thanking him for my wife. And I just, whoa! Set your mind on things above, not the earth. You died. Why are you going to set your mind on things above? Because you died. You didn't incorporate Jesus into your life. You did not pray a prayer to go to heaven. And you're not just coming for him to fix your broken stuff. I'm not being mean. I'm being real. Yeah. You died. Yeah. The only reason stuff is broken because you were trying to live. <laughs> so you don't want him to fix your broken stuff. You need to die. Right. So everything broken, you just die with it. Yeah. And then you can make everything new. Listen, you don't want to just stop. Who, who in here has struggled with addiction? Who in here has literally struggled with addiction? Okay, look, your goal is not to never use again. Your goal isn't just to stop using. There's reasons for addiction. Your goal is to be formed in Christ to become love. The addiction is just a byproduct of not knowing who you are and a lack of love, a deficit in your life. Something we're either not believing or seeing. It doesn't mean we're evil. It doesn't mean we're wicked. It can be a compulsion. It can drive you and break your heart. Who's ever used and cried and swore you wouldn't use again and you'd use again and cry and swear you wouldn't use again? See, there's something about that heart that I uphold that God can work with. See, I don't say, you wipe and used again? I say, no, look how sorrowful you are. Look how much you really don't want to use. There's a reason it drives you because it's a, it's an identity crisis. It's a lack of value. It's a lack of seeing who you are. And this thing, it's a, it's a, it's a survival instinct that's trying to fill something that only truth can. God, you die. You die. You're not just trying to get free from drugs, guys. You're dying. Come on, you heard the phrase dry drunk. What's the use of being a dry drunk? You might as well enjoy the drink. <laughs> you don't hear that wrong. You know what I'm saying. Like, what are we accomplishing while I haven't drank for 20 years and you still have all the same issues, things, mindsets, and reasons? The only thing is you just didn't drink. You've got major issues, you're hurt, you're in unforgiveness, you're judgmental, you're rejecting. So you're just not drinking. So you're just a dry sinner instead of a drunk sinner. I don't know. What I'm saying is not drinking isn't the point. Transformation of life is the point. It's just not right to talk that plain about the people. You died. See, you died. You died. Your life's hidden in Christ with God, or with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then we're going to appear with Him in glory. Because this is true, that's what therefore means. Because of this, or in light of this, don't just jump in and read a therefore, or always know what it's there for. <laughs> Serious, people open up their Bible, read a therefore, and misquote the word. You've got to know what it's there for. <laughs> therefore, because of this, put to death your members which are on the earth. Put to death. Put to death. You're not managing them. You're putting them to death. For a you're not managing lust. You're putting it to death. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, God made me this way. No, you became that way. When man ate the tree, became self-centered. <laughs> love isn't lust. Love is love. Yeah, that's right. Who wants a way to lust you? You want a way to love you. But actually, some young ladies grow up believing they want somebody to lust them because then they feel valuable and pleasurable and desirable. Ah! Don't do that to yourself. You're way more than that, ladies. Yeah. And don't reduce a woman to a. Say it, Dan. Say it. Yeah. Look, God didn't bring Eve into the garden because Adam's walking in the direction wanting to know what to do with it. <laughs> and it wasn't because he was lonely. 
It's because when God looked at him, he saw himself and said, where's this cat going to go from here? He is so full of who I am. He needs somebody to love. Yeah. So he reached into the man and brought out what was already there in God. He didn't make another love of clay. He reached into the fullness of God in man and brought forth the woman. And the two make up the full manifestation. Yeah. It's amazing. It's powerful. Yeah. Well, but I like her. Yeah, but he likes me. Well, I'm not getting any younger, but I'd love to have kids. None of those are reasons to be together. <laughs> It's out of the fullness and strength of your life in Christ that you ought to come together because then you'll do justice to the relationship. Yeah. Come on. You don't need flattered by the other because they come need on. you so bad. Come on. They need you so bad you ought to encourage them and say, how about if we pray and let's keep growing in Jesus and maybe one day we can walk this thing out. Yeah. Don't be enamored because of their great need for you and let that fill some deficit value in your own. Jesus. Yeah. Richard, yeah. Oh, we messed up a lot of relationships. We've hurt each other. I love you is the three most mysterious words on the planet. We say it because people desperately need to hear them and it works when we use it because people are desperately to hear them. I love you. No, you just love me. romantic movie out of it, but it's pain, and it's a mess. Am I out of order now? You all right? You okay? You enjoying it? Are you scared because I use the word erection in the church? Uh -huh. no, you're way bigger than that girl in the Holy Ghost. I didn't throw you at all. Are you all right? Okay. I'm going to smile on it. Tracy looks like Tracy. She was looking really serious there for a minute. I said, man, I must be out of bed. I said, if I messed up Tracy, I'm it. I know. Oh, God, I must have Do you see why God made woman in the garden? It's when he looked at man, he saw himself. So a woman's created value is to receive the pure love of God for a man that's just like God. She was never meant to be reduced to need and exploiting to measuring up with the world. Oh, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> she was created to yield to and respond to the perfect, pure love of God for a man that knows Jesus. That's right. And I'll be real straight. Without God, it's impossible to love. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Say it, Dan. That's right. Uh, ah. It's God. <sighs> Leo love, she went into Jerusalem, so it's sexual, it's all about feelings, we're not feeling happy, and you feel like you're not a woman. See, it's all about me and you. How about loving you? I'm just kidding, girl. Hope you got some good news to me. Therefore, put to death, put to death, not manage, don't manage fornication, put it to death. Come on. Man, if you guys, if you guys that are in relationships and aren't married, if you guys would get a hold of this and realize that you were made for God's image, that there's communion and covenant in God, there's a holy place of coming together, becoming one in Him together, and not cross those lines and do what the world has taught us is right. Man, I'm telling you, there is a There is a manifestation of God's presence to be sought after in sexual union. That's, I've never heard it preached. I've never read a book that's even close to right. We quote the world and wrap Jesus around. We take our experiences wow. and make it Christians out. Come on. And I promise you, something is exploited as sexuality. There must be an amazing holy root that is trying to keep us. Come on. Come on. Don't try to one down the books. There's no topic more exploited than sexuality on the planet. Yeah. There must be a holy root. I saw that. Talk about it. The Lord forbids me to preach. You know why? He said it'll hurt them more than it'll help them because where their hearts are, and spouses will hold each other to what you preach and it'll cause more harm to you. He said wives will hold their husbands accountable. Some husbands will get bad. Instead of bringing blessing, it would actually bring consternation and animosity. The truth. 
because we don't want the truth on us. Young women sat there and bawled. I still want to share it with the world, but I can't. God won't let me. The young women cried and bawled and said, Oh my goodness, thank you. You just saved my life in many ways. Because it's so powerful. The truth is so powerful. You don't sit two young people down and say, Now listen, you're supposed to do it. <laughs> they cool. They, it's fornication, man. God won't look smiling down on that stuff, man. So just make sure you feel it. You guys doing it? You're supposed to do it. And they go, no, you're supposed to do it. No, no, no. I want to do it. No, no. Well, maybe I'll offer them to You don't tell people you just don't do it. You tell them what? But I don't know that we can teach that out clear enough to impart such a conviction that we actually have the ability to offer it. Right. If you get alone with me, I will talk both of you real straight. I've had men. I had one guy look up at me and say, What are you doing, man? You're cutting me off. A Christian. In the country. I said, What are you doing, man? You're cutting me off. And she was bald. I said, Leave the room, man, right now, quickly. Leave the room. And I looked at him and I talked to him. Really shocked. Like a father that was very serious. Yeah. And stuff like how dare you? Yeah. Wham. Value of the world. Wham. Selfish. Wham. Yeah. I really let him out. Was I yeah. mad at him? I was trying to save his soul. Was I offended? Not a chance. <laughs> Trying to love him in the place of truth and honor and dignity. Come on. Character, Christ like. I know I'm scratching the surface of some stuff, but let it bring conviction into your life. <laughs> and ladies, don't you dare sell cheap. You draw Christ out. Come on. And men don't you misuse the value of a woman. I'll leave it at that. If you love her, you'll seek the truth on the stage. Yeah, I'm done. Okay. Put to death uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming from the sons of disobedience, which you yourselves all were when you walked in them. But now, see, we're not confessing Christians, we're changed. But now you yourselves put off these things. Anger. Look, you don't manage anger, you put it off. The world calls it anger management courses, which is saying anger is everybody's normal. You put it off because you were never made for it. You were made for love. So how do you put off anger without biting your lip and trying not to be angry? Yeah. You get alone in prayer and you surrender your identity to Him and you're back to your original value. Amen? Yeah. So watch this. I'm jumping to verse 12 because I am way, way, way too late. Therefore is the elect of God, holy and beloved. I'm sorry. Let me back up to 9. Don't lie to one another. Why? Why won't we lie to one another? Because you put off the you put off the old man and his deeds. That I had a lot to do with lying. Didn't you? And you put on the who? Who's the new man? He's renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Do you see that Christianity is a restoration back to the image of God? Yes. That I didn't incorporate Jesus into my life, he became my life. I'm not here just to sing a cool worship song. If I'm a musician, I'm not here just to bang away on my instrument. I'm here to be like Him. The Bible says that it's God. It's God, right? 
He causes us to triumph in Christ. And we think that just means our circumstances are going right. No, it means we have the right perspective in the midst of everything. He always gives us the answer in the midst of everything. And through us diffuses the fragrance of His knowledge everywhere. Yeah. And the next verse says, To God, you are the fragrance of Christ. <laughs> Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. Come on, guys. Kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Bearing with one another. Forgiving one another. Why? So you're forgiven? No. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ, you're already forgiven. Here's the deal. It would be totally selfish for me to want to be forgiven of everything I've ever done and not forgive you. It would be grossly selfish for me to want to receive mercy from God and not be merciful towards you. Who do I think I am? Come on, man. Why is it easy to forgive? Because you realize you've been forgiven of everything. People that have a hard time forgiving haven't received true forgiveness and haven't understood that they're created to be loved. If I taste the joy of God showing me mercy, I love showing me mercy. Why would I want to be loved so flawlessly from God and not want to become that very love to you? Because the fall of man drew lines in your life called human rights. And we think it's the truth. And how can you deny yourself and hold on to the rights? Are you following me? And this is what I sadly said to Josh on the way down here in the highway. I didn't know I'd be preaching this tonight, but I said, God's had me doing this for months. And so you can tell I can cry. Like Grace says, I'm crying inside. I just don't need to cry, so I'm not pulling the emotional card on you later tonight. But when you preach on this, I've realized in the church, not everybody wants to become us. They want to hold on to what sin gave them. What Adam's fall gave them, what the enemy's deception gave them, what they inherited through the lie yes. instead of the truth. Yes. And we covet what we were never created to be. And all Jesus is asking you to give back is what you never were in the first place. Yes. Why is that so hard? Not everybody in the church is willing to become loved because they want to say, yeah, but, well, unless, of course. And hold on to their rights. And when you do that, you put yourself through a battle. At the cost of your identity and everybody else's. You must be born again. That is not a confession that takes you to heaven. That is a transformation. I kept getting hit with this. I need to do this. I hope you're okay. I don't ever really do this, but I feel like I need to do this. And pray this. I, I'm a truth guy. It's truth that makes you free. Not praying over people. There's times you need, you need affirmation. You need assurance. You need. I'm just going to say it straight. I'm not going to make excuses for it. People that know me would be shocked at what I'm doing right now because I don't do this stuff. I feel it in my heart. Your identity, growing in God's love and receiving His mercy every day is what I'm calling you to, okay? If you're in this place, just you getting your identity straight can stop everything in your life, addiction and everything. I feel like I need to lay hands on a couple of people. It's been years since I've done this, but God has done me to do this since I've made You've got an active addiction in your life tonight, you feel like there's no way you can break in. And you're hearing what I'm preaching, and you're hearing, yeah, I know I'm a son, and but these things, it feels like it's got such a hold of you, and it's driving you. I'm not calling you into sensationalism. I'm not calling you into just, okay, I'm going to pray for you so you're free. I'm calling you to sonship. Every day you wake up, you start right. right. Every day you wake up, thank you that you love me, love. Don't try to earn his love, receive his love. But I feel in my heart there's a couple people here, if you'd be honest, you're in all the right places doing all the right things, but behind the scenes this thing just seems like it's choking the life out of you and you can't break away and you so want to and you cry about it. I want to pray for you. I want that thing off of you. And I want to see 
mindset for you now. So if that's you, you get up here quickly. You've got a habit, an active thing in your life that seems like it won't let go, and it breaks your heart. It breaks your heart. Like, truly, if you would never do it again, you'd rejoice. That's the kind of heart I'm talking about, okay? That's, that's why people cry and stuff, not that you have to. And uh, this is an authority. Okay, thanks. This isn't a thunder lightning prayer. It's an authority prayer. And it's because I love you and I have the right to love you. <laughs> and I have the right to touch you and see change. <laughs> and I believe there's nothing, nobody can do to stop what I believe for. Okay? I don't even believe you can mess this up. I believe that you came up here soon enough. Okay? Because it's humble to come up here. And I want everyone that came up here to look at me. What you get trapped in, what you, I don't even need to know what it is. <laughs> Listen to me. What you came up here for, look at me, everybody up here, is not who you are. It's not who you are. It's what you can deal with, struggle with, trouble with. I'm letting you know it's not who you are. What Jesus did on that cross, the statement that he made, and the love that God sent for Jesus Christ, the finished work to make you righteous, forgiven, holy, blameless, above the road, that's who you are. That's who you love. All you need to be in your heart is sincere and sorry in your heart. Regret produces death. Godly sorrow brings repentance and vindication and clearing of yourself. I'm going to be real simple with this. It's just an authority thing. I'm going to come against some things as I go down this line quickly and I'm going to pray for you. But here's what I want you to do after this altar call and in the days to come. Every day you wake up, receive the love of God. Will you? Every day you wake up, thank you, Father, for loving me. Yeah. Thank you, my life is so worth living. Thank you that I'm a treasure to you, God. You shed blood for me. You love me. And I give my life to you. And yield to him. And sing, I am yours. Over and over. And over. Did you get it? I love you guys. Go pray. It's real simple. Somebody take this mic. I don't need it. It's a real quick thing. I'm going down the line. I'm just going to pray. God is a big deal, man. He doesn't need, he doesn't need a lot of time. Whether you feel something or not, means nothing to me. What matters is you walked up here. And you're sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Because for me to call you up here, I have to believe this. It has to be God. Because my faith can even love you. Um, I went out to my car and I got the CD. Jeremy, honey? Um, Jer I'm sorry, Anna, it's song number nine, okay? I felt the unction to get the CD out of my car. No, oh, don't start it yet. Please, don't start it. Stop it. I need to explain it first. While he's praying, I feel the connection because it does touch on some of what he taught in us tonight. However, the song is very heavy, and you need to hear it in the spirit. It starts off with, I killed my children. It's the first part of the song. Now, sometimes with our words, we kill our children. By what we say to them, or what we have said to them in the past, out of being upset before this wonderful message came to make us free. However, I just wanted to touch base on that because the song gets really good as it goes. Uh, but I really feel the need. It is going to definitely, probably, if you listen to it, shift the spirit. That's right. What okay. Tracy's talking about is a spirit of repentance. It's a heart of repentance. It's a gift. Repentance means you change the way I think. In other words, wow, my life is more than this. My life is more than what I've been living, thinking, doing. Repentance means to change the way you think. So a song like this brings you into a place where you realize the fruitlessness of something and the value of your life in the light of Him, and it brings you to a place of change. It's very powerful. So just play. Yeah, yeah. And then we're just, as it's playing, at some point I'm just going to have to bless you guys. I kill my children. 